several times in each chapter we see how helpless krishna is we find weakness lording over strength exactly because it is weak shrimad bhagavad gita is an epic struggle and krishna is the struggler it 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 all tugs at your heart strings it's actually a song as much of melancholy as of wisdom that's the reason i love the gita many of us were already acquainted with the amazing phenomenal work that you do with your videos and other things but in preparation for this talk many of us got familiar so based on that we've got some uh, queries so uh, the first question is that um, in uh, many of your interviews you mentioned that one cannot be spiritual if uh, one eats animals at the same time so when uh, cruelty is behind milk and meat consumption are highlighted people who are not vegan they tend to get very defensive so uh, this question has has two parts the first part is what does such defensiveness indicate from the prism of spirituality and secondly that given that the meat and milk consumption and demand has increased dramatically in india so does this point towards a large scale spiritual crisis and if so what kind of an approach can be taken while talking to people about animal cruelty and also veganism this was uh, sunaina's question it's it's a it's a bit of a tricky affair to to introduce the fact of uh, animal cruelty to someone without uh, alleging or uh, insinuating that the person is some kind of a criminal hmm? so one has to be sensitive to to the response of the listener and to be fair education or awareness towards such things is pretty uh, low so if the person has not yet known of these things um he or she can be extended some benefit uh of doubt it is possible that the person never had the opportunity to be educated in that regard uh vegans sometimes exhibit a holier than thou kind of attitude an aggression that is counterproductive even i am guilty of that i have i've seen that but uh, uh when you look at uh, someone who comes from a meat eating family or uh, or the traditional kind of indian vaishnav family where milk and uh, kheer and uh, dahi uh, are a staple then it it comes as a shock to that person that milk involves cruelty hmm? it's a totally alien and a disturbing concept so it has to be brought out with due expertise and that does not mean that you have to be especially trained in uh, communicating these matters just that one has to be sensitive that the other person might not really know or even if he knows it is his environment that has been too much on him and so far it has been next to impossible for that person to quit uh, all these food items or habits so these things have to be gently brought out i understand you see when you are familiar with the pain and the suffering that animals go through um, that disturbs you and that uh, makes you rush to help them it becomes difficult to be gentle and patient and a little slow and measured right because you you have you have just seen the uh, the hell that the goat or the cow or the buffalo uh, have to go through you are acquainted with that 
So, so you are agitated. And when you see someone consuming meat, you almost want to slap them. I, I appreciate that feeling. But also look at that person. He might come from a family of generations of meat eaters. And when that fellow was two years of age, that was when he was served uh, his, his first morsel of biryani or, uh, or chicken piece or something. Right? So it's almost flowing in his veins now. He has to be a bit gently weaned away from all that. Right? So, so uh, one has to be relentlessly at it. The bombardment uh, on social media has to be um, uh, incessant. But when it comes to personal uh, confrontation, uh, one has to remember that the objective is not to shame the other. The objective is to help the animal. Just shaming the other won't help. In fact, uh, it is possible that the other becomes uh, aggressive in his defense. And that aggression might mean that he says that not only do I continue to eat, but I'll actually consume flesh in double the quantity. Hmm? As, as some kind of uh, uh, signal of childish defiance. Huh? People do that. So it's a tricky thing. Um, we want to we want to rush, but we'll have to rush gently. Hmm? That's something I'm not only telling you. That's something that I remind myself often because I too want to rush. I want this whole uh, cruelty to come to an absolute end right now. Hmm? Uh, but that's not how it can happen. Hmm? So one has to gently rush. And, and the second thing you said that, uh, is it uh, symptomatic of a wider spiritual crisis? Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. The very philosophy of life uh, has gone all wrong. Hmm? We have been told that individual happiness is the purpose of life. One lives to consume, you, you live to be happy for yourself. Of course, you can add these little goodies like compassion and helping someone. And you know, all these are little tidbits that you add to the overwhelming project of uh, self-satiation. Mm? But they are just uh, that, little tidbits. Mm? The overwhelming theme of life is personal pleasure. That's the philosophy we have been fed uh, since uh, since our birth and uh, that philosophy is a very violent one hmm? <clears throat> not that uh, someone teaches that philosophy to us via a classroom course or a textbook it's just in the air right you you look at a hoarding a billboard you look at the way a, a, a shop is structured. You look at the clothes people are wearing. You look at the, the voice uh, of, uh, of, of somebody, some, a marketing professional or, uh, or somebody. And it's, the philosophy is contained there. It's embedded there. So we are being subliminally uh, educated, uh, rather indoctrinated, conditioned in that philosophy. Hmm? And uh, that's the spiritual crisis. See, spirituality is basically, simply about realizing who you are and a clear uh, fallout of that is that you no more care for your personal desires. I am not the person, so how can I be uh, so particular about my personal desires? That's what all spirituality is about. Hmm? I am not the person I appear to be. That's not my reality. Hmm? That's just my appearance. The person is my appearance. My reality is, uh, is beyond the person that I appear. Hmm? Therefore, all the personal desires that I have have to be taken lightly. 
cannot be given a great importance. So that's what spirituality is, where you cannot give your personal desires great importance. Giving your personal desires great importance is to subject yourself to suffering. And uh, freedom from suffering is the goal of entire spirituality. There is no other goal. We suffer so much, therefore spirituality exists. Spirituality is self-knowledge. Spirituality is not uh, spirit business. Huh? Basic self-knowledge, to see who I am and what I want and therefore how I must live. That's what uh, spirituality or self-knowledge is. On the other hand, the philosophy we have been fed tells us that personal uh, <coughs> ingratiation is the sole purpose of life. So these two are obviously at odds. Spirituality and the philosophy the commoners believe in. Though nobody realizes that, because nobody believes that he has a philosophy of life. We all think we have a certain opinion about life that is our own. All the opinions that we all have about life are not at all our own. They either arise from the bodily tendencies or from the social environment. Hmm? Those are the desires that we chase. Hmm? Bodily compulsions or social conditioning. Both together telling us, be happy, be happy, be happy, be happy at whatever cost. The only antidote to that is uh, self-knowledge. Self-knowledge tells you, who is there to be happy? Whom are you trying to please? Can we inquire into that? Hmm? It's alright to be happy. But who exactly is the one being fed happiness at such great cost? It's like you are drunk and you are trying to feed yourself and you do not even know who you are and therefore where your mouth is. And some imposter, some fraudster is standing right behind you with his mouth wide open and you pick up the morsel and you feed them and you are thinking you are feeding it to yourself. Somebody else is being fed when you are trying to fulfill your desires. Your desires are not fulfilling you. They are fulfilling somebody else. Somebody else. That's the point of self-knowledge. When you realize who you are, then you cannot spend your uh, life uh, pleasing somebody who you are not. Hmm? So... <clears throat> You know what that means, all of that. What that means is that if this system is to continue, the system of thought, the system of economics, the markets, the politics, um, the society, the family, the education, if all of this is to continue, self-knowledge has to be obstructed. Very externally, very staunchly, very deliberately, very systematically. If self-knowledge advances, then everything that, that we see around us and see within us will be threatened. And there are vested interests. So people will not allow real spirituality to prosper. But at the same time, it has become some kind of a moral fad to declare that one is spiritual. So what would then happen? Shady alternatives to real spirituality will need to be fabricated. See, real spirituality would threaten the entire system within and without. Right from the, the kindergarten school <coughs> to the parliaments of the world. Everything will be threatened if, if real spirituality advances. So some kind of fake spirituality has to be created and patronized. So that the, the, the systems and the vested interests can continue to prosper. That's what we are seeing all around us today. That would also mean that if you come up with real self-knowledge, you better be careful Hmm? You, you are in crosshairs. Hmm? You are being watched. 
then you are being targeted that makes a lot of sense thank you so much